Lee's angry. Yes, Tom Williamson. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. We've met. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, okay? yeah, I remember now. Did you just get frozen? <laughs> <laughs> you put the cat down and you don't know how to talk anymore? Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. how are you? I'm oh, good, how are you? Good. good. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so, welcome to Rise and Thrive TV. Hi, Rise and Thrive TV. Um, and yeah, so basically, have you seen uh, any of the like Rise and Thrive videos that I used to do on Instagram? Yes, I did my research. I watched the Maya Mitchell one. Cause I was like, oh, oh, you, saw, you actually saw the interview. Okay, cool. I saw the interview because I was like, I don't know. What, what to expect. What to expect. So it's something like that. Yeah, you're both Australian. Mm -hmm. You're both brunettes. Yep. You're both actresses. Yep, we are the same person. You are not the same person, <laughs> but I have asked both of you to do these interviews for similar reasons. I mm -hmm. really try to identify what it is about the individual that I feel they embody when it comes to the, the phrase rise and thrive. And for you, it's something that I observed obviously like from personal interactions with you Freya <clears throat> but also something that I've observed through your characters and I was watching um, it really stuck out with three characters that I want to talk about a little later mm -hmm. beneath the waves oh okay um, yeah. no way to live yeah. and um, the choking game yes okay and the moments where I felt like most drawn into your performance were when you were fiercely defending your right to be you, your right to, you know, have your freedom of expression, your, your life, you know, just like, what I got from it was that you are a fighter for justice, okay. you know, like, mm. it, you're, you're a freedom fighter in the sense that you are not going to stand for anybody limiting you or putting you in a box okay, right. in any kind of way, mm -hmm. and I just felt that was something that was very inspirational and is partly what inspires me about you yeah you know it's partly why you recommend a class I take it you know <laughs> um, yeah. so yeah I just want to tell you that thank you that's how I feel you embody the phrase okay. and um, I just wanted to start like with the journey I did some Beautiful. research as well and I saw that you started singing mm -hmm. and uh, then you were involved with a fraudulent modeling agency yes Oh my god, you really did. Yeah, so I want to I want to <laughs> yeah, know about right. that. Um, so I was at a fair with my mum back in Perth, Australia, where I'm from, and it was a modeling booth set up, and they took my picture, and I'd always wanted to be a model, loved the idea of being a model, um, <laughs> but my parents didn't have the height, and they were like, "You're not going to be a model." And mm -hmm. I was like, "Yes, I am." Anyway, it didn't happen, but. In the meantime, they took my photo, they were like, we love your look, we'd love you to have you come in and be a part of our agency, mm -hmm. but part of being with us is you had to pay $400. Oh, yeah, so, right out the right. gate. Exactly. Yeah, but, but you're young. Yeah, 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 so I didn't know and was green. But the good part about being with them was that they sent me to an acting class. Mm -hmm. And that was the acting class I was in for years, Carly okay. Robbins. And um, I did a commercial class, and then I continued on with the classes, like weekly classes, mm -hmm. because um, I just enjoyed it so much. What about that class in particular was it that you enjoyed so much? Like, wh yeah, what was it that, like, because you, you, you started taking that class, and then you were yeah. like, I want to be an actress, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I loved anything creative, so if mm -hmm. I did it for a little bit, my parents were so good, they would let me do classes. Mm -hmm. Like, I played lots of different instruments, so they would always let me do that. But, um, I think in the commercial class we had to be like, hold a pen and go like, this is really great chicken. And <laughs> something like that. And, um, something about that class made me want to keep doing acting. <laughs> but, I remember the first thing we did in acting class was we had to look at a wall or a whiteboard and pretend it was like a magnis magnis mag magnificent mm -hmm. piece of art. And I remember just like really feeling that. And seeing it and creating that using my imagination. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, cool, I love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's dope. That's really dope. That imagination, yeah, and the ability to conjure stuff mm -hmm. up out of thin air. Yeah, is, exactly. Uh, it's really yeah, powerful. That's the joy of creating. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so that's what, like, that's what got you deep into it. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. started plays or? Um, I did do a play that was my yeah. first professional role. Um, but I was never really into theatre. Okay. Um, I like the idea of having a big effect mm -hmm. and having a wide effect. And I feel like with theatre, it's 
limited because it's only for that time frame, it's not caught and immortalised on screen. And um, obviously there's only so many people that can that can see it, yeah, yeah. Whereas movies, if they're very, very good, they can hit like reach millions, millions of, of people. people. Yeah, that I thought when you said big effect, wide effect, it was like your performance. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, not I was so like, much yeah, size. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then you got you know, and it really has to be a special play. You know, yeah, exactly. Really, like with really Hamilton. amazing actors. Yeah, and like yeah. an amazing director. That's the kind of play I would love to be a part of. Yeah. I can see you doing any medium. Yeah, yeah. Do you still sing? Do you still practice? Um, you see, this, the reason why I didn't want to pursue singing was because I, I could sing, mm -hmm. but a lot of people can sing, and I just really wanted to be amazing. And yeah, I whatever didn't, you I didn't did, feel yeah. I was amazing at singing. So, yeah. I think you're amazing at acting. Thank you. I think you're amazing at Thank acting. Thank you very at the much. Acting. <laughs> at the acting, yes. Yeah. The game of acting. Yeah. The craft of acting. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right, so you did that, you did the play, mm -hmm. and, well, hold on, before we go any further into your journey, because I want to, like, hear about how you got to Hollywood. Yes. I also read, or I, I heard in an interview, that you wanted to be a spy. Oh, right, I did. I really wanted to be a spy. I saw Spy Kids, and I was like, that's <laughs> it. I want to be a spy. You get to dress up and play a person. And then I'm standing in the supermarket, and... <laughs> I see something in the headlines or I hear something and I, or I said something to mom and I was like I want to be a spy and she was like well you know spies can get killed and I was like oh well I don't want to be a spy anymore how old were you oh, I must have been like 10 <laughs> and your mom is like very cut and dry yeah she's like well you know spy. you know yeah. I can see her delivering that line yeah, exactly. in the grocery store super like yeah, yeah with the cart yeah, I don't want to die yeah it's not my time yet especially at 10 <laughs> No, not for me. <laughs> can, you, can you get the, you know, the sticky day pudding, you know, <laughs> yeah, after she yeah. tells you that your dreams are shattered because yeah. spies can die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was it. That was it. That thing. was it for me. I was like, I'm not going to be a spy. I'm going to be a model. Okay, so then you wanted the modeling. Okay. Yeah, but then my parents told me I couldn't do that. So, so then you became an actress. Yeah, so then I became an actor. I think the spy thing is so interesting. Being an actor? Yeah, yeah to being a spy to, and to being a model. A model. Well, you know, yeah. it's funny because I think they're all kind of interconnected. Yeah. You know, like, I used to want to be a spy. Yeah, you did. And, yeah, yeah and I would go on little missions mm -hmm. in my neighbor's yeah. backyard. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fishman. Yeah, sorry, and, Mrs. Uh, Fishman. Yeah, we would go on little missions, like, at Thanksgiving, be under the table. Yeah, and like It's exactly. fun. It it's is. fun. At a certain point, yeah. then you realize that you can die, but also that you look too old to be snooping yeah. on other people's property. Exactly. But um, when it like, you know, in movies you see like sometimes the the, the ingenue spy uh, it has model good looks mm -hmm. and you know, has uh, the ability to act yeah. like in a masterful capacity. Exactly. So I, I can see how they're, they're uh, correlated and uh, I can see how it works for you. <laughs> Especially, I mean, we'll we'll talk about no way to live, but I can yeah. just your 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 approach to the work is very much still like that of what a spy would have to do. Yeah, you know, it's not taken lightly. No, you do your research. You do your research. You do your work. You don't. You're not gonna die. No. But thank God. you do have to convince people that you're that person. Yeah. You know, absolutely. for that yeah. amount of time. Mm -hmm. All right. So you did the play. That was your first pro professional piece of acting. Yeah. And then, what, did it just snowball? What happened? What brought you here? Yeah, I decided <clears throat> I was going to go to Hollywood and be an actress. And my parents were like, oh, oh okay. Um, and I was really lucky <laughs> because... Did they let you? They listened to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told them what to do and yeah. they listened. <laughs> no, um, but they were very supportive. And I'm an only child, which also helped. So they put all their energy into me. Mum wanted to be an actress growing up and she w didn't have that opportunity so mm -hmm. I think she was like well present Frey with all the opportunities mm -hmm. so that she can do what makes her happy and live a happy life. And she's great at that. Very good. Yeah, yeah. she's very good at that. Did she set up the website? Uh, which website? Um, FreyaTingley.net no I, no, I think that's a fan site but I did that's have a, a really website. That's a really good though. website. Though. I know. <laughs> It's yeah. really good. That's, yeah, it is. I was like, oh, okay, she's she's crossing yeah. all the bases with this. Yeah, one. no, that's my mom. Um, no, that's not that's my mom. That's, sorry, that's not my mom. That's my, that's a fan. Yeah, yeah. my mom did have a website for me. Okay. That they created, but that's gone now. Yeah. Okay, so they trusted you. Yes, they did trust me. They okay. believed in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Because you have that attitude. I think that's why they have that. You know, I mean, for some parents, to let their kids do that is one decision. For your parents, I can't speak for the way their thought process was, but I feel like if you were anything like you are now as a little girl, which after seeing that little oh, picture of you was. in the red dress, yeah, I kind of yeah. imagine how you were. They were like, she's going to be okay. Yeah. You know? I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. She knows what she wants to do. She's not going to suffer fools, you know, which you don't. Yeah. And that can lead to a much more trusting, supportive environment. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, they were very, very supportive and uh, mum did a lot of research on mm. how to get to Hollywood and what the right steps were and so that was just what I needed as well, having that knowledge and information and that push as well, that yeah, extra push. Yeah, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she did that and then was it an immediate jump or were you going back and forth between Australia and uh, LA for a little bit or what? Right, well, I knew I needed to get an agent and a manager. Mm -hmm. So I came out to LA and I had some meetings set up with various managers. Signed with a manager and then signed with an agent and I was mm -hmm. only in LA for two weeks. And well, weren't you, you met with an, a manager that was known for like making people stars, right? I mean, they all say that. They're all like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. we've, we, we've scouted this person yeah. and uh, <laughs> claim lots of different success, but I think as an artist, you're responsible for your own success. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there, I mean, this was like kind of a reputable person, right? Reasonably. I mean, they were smaller. Uh, they were smaller. They okay. weren't a huge manager. No. Okay. Okay. Which is good. Yeah. Especially for a young actor and actress starting right. out. Yeah. Who's green. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got your reps. Yeah. And then what was the process like after that? Went back to Australia. Um, I really <coughs> wanted Katniss Everdeen, the role in The Hunger Games. I saw you were what, top 10? Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted that. I had a, a phone call with uh, Gary Ross, the director. Uh -huh. um, and obviously didn't get that one. Uh, <laughs> but. This is Jayla. <laughs> this is actually, she's going to unzip. She's that good of a spot. But then, um, so I was in Australia and we knew I had to get my visa to work in the States. Mm -hmm. So mum really was good for that because she really, uh, you know, um, hooked it up with a lawyer mm -hmm. and then went through the process of getting my visa so mm -hmm. that I could move out to LA. Which is quite the process. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of requirements. Especially yeah. coming here. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm right now doing it for the program in England. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's going over there from here, but still it's just like all the requirements and mm -hmm. all the specific deadlines and like all just the specifics exactly. of what the United Kingdom needs and requires is... I know. <laughs> Bless you. Pardon me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's substantial. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like going to school again and doing an assignment. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. And I haven't been in school for a while, so it's just like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not creative. I know. At all. Exactly, I know. <laughs> but we're lucky that this is our life because there are plenty of people that that's their work. Exactly. And that's what they have to do every day. Yeah, And true. yeah, it would drive me. I'm sorry, people, that I have to do that every day. I'm, I'm, if you love it, more power to you. But if you don't, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am truly sorry. Makes me emotional. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, all right, so you did the visa process, and all that obviously worked because now you're here. Yeah. And then what was the first project you got when you landed? Well, I moved out here pilot season 2012 with my mum. Okay. And <clears throat> basically it costs a lot of money to be out here from mm. Australia, you know. And so she was like, look, we have like three or four months. We can be out here for pilot season. And after that, we have to head back to Australia. And so I was like, oh my God, okay, I have to book a role. Mm -hmm. So I put it out into the universe. And actually, I was really inspired by Jennifer Lawrence at the time because she was very self-determined, mm -hmm. knew what she wanted. And her first role was uh, on a TV show, I believe. Okay. Which wasn't along. When she was young? Yeah, when she was younger. I don't, I think it was her first role. Okay. And so I was like, okay, that's good. I want to be on a TV show. I need to land a role by my birthday, which is March 26th. Yeah. Aries. Sort of the end of pilot season. Yeah, Aries. Aries babies. Yep. And um, had those two things that I wanted. Okay. And uh, 
Yeah, that was, and I thought also if it's a TV show, I'm gonna earn good money, yeah. so that I can keep myself um, going yeah. in the off periods of acting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it happened. What it did? So, so I booked Hemlock Grove. Well, I signed the contract for Hemlock Grove on my show. birthday. Wow. That was the show when I signed it on my birthday. Wow. Yeah. On your birthday. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. I have a very similar story yeah? to that with it? the Fosters, where it was literally, uh, I think it was my third pilot season, mm -hmm. and um, I just told myself, I said, you know, I'm, I'm gonna book a pilot on uh, a, a major network or like a cable network uh, outside of these certain networks. Yeah. So I was very, very specific um, with a, a large fan base and um, a uh, uh, like good quality yeah. of the show. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna book it by my birthday, which yeah. is March 31st. Oh, wow. And I got the Fosters March 27th. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I really believe that like if you're specific in what you want and it's positive and you put it out into the universe and you make it happen and there's like no doubt in your mind um, that it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, you can't be going, oh, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen because then it's sort of like a little bit of doubt there. But if you're like, it's going to happen and we're going to make it happen, mm -hmm. I feel like oftentimes it does. Agreed. Is that, have you always had that mentality? Always, yeah. Where, like, where does that come from? <laughs> Um, my family are very much like that. We make things happen Yeah. in our family. Um, we decide on something and we're going to make it happen and it's going to come true. So you're intentional um, people. Intention. It's intention. Having really strong intention of what you want to happen. Yeah. And also making it so that you, so it can happen in the yeah. universe. Yeah. Creating Putting that, that in place. Yeah, because I've always admired that about you where it was, whether it's just, but it's, you know, it's like there's, Sometimes I think people can misinterpret that and they can be, like you said, um, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna mm -hmm. happen. Or a yes. little too overzealous. Exactly. But with you, like I just remember on <laughs> cause you're so goofy too. So you're just, you're just like silly. But, it, but at the same time, there was like this laser sharp, intentional <laughs> focus. Like this laugh is, yeah. don't trust that laugh. <laughs> yeah, you'll see in the movie, don't trust that laugh. Um, yeah, that I always felt from you, yeah. you know, and that's that's from family. Yeah. Okay. And also myself. I mean, yeah. family give you so much and support so much, but then you also are your own self. Yeah. Outside of your family, so I think I am naturally like that. I think you are too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, truly. I feel like didn't you tell me a story one time on set uh, about how you were at your school or something? Did oh you my get gosh, in I went through. Oh my god, so many times <laughs> because I said no to things. But I was telling my friend the other day, I was like. Okay, this happened in year five, this happened in year seven, this happened in year eight. If I didn't like what they were doing, I would say no. Yeah. I would say my thoughts. But sometimes it wasn't <laughs> the best thing because like, I was very antagonistic and angry about it. And I look back now and I'm like, hmm. well, I can still get my own way, but if I handle it with a lot of love. Grace and love. Grace yeah. and love and like doing things the right way. You yeah. Know? I didn't have the tact then. You were not tactful, yeah. <laughs> no. You did not have the diplomacy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> But at least I knew what I wanted. Yeah. You know, because so many people are sheep and they follow in other people's footsteps and they're just like, you know, teacher tells them to do something. Like, oh, they just yeah, do it, yeah. yeah I was good. victim of that. Yeah. And like just begrudgingly internalize yeah. the fact that I was doing something I didn't want. Um, right. Yeah, and I just didn't speak up at the right times. Yeah. Well, there was, I did art classes when I was like seven years old. And that class, we were going to be doing um, like, Putting, what was it called? The word when you put cracked tiles together to make a picture. The mosaic. Mosaic, right? Yeah. Exactly. And I was like, Ugh, mosaic. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm not into mosaics. <laughs> My thing is like painting. Yeah. Like there's a, if, if you guys could see if we could turn it around. There's a painting, well, a few paintings outside yeah. on her balcony right now. That's my studio right there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. She's got a little setup. She's got her her paints. Yeah. A little easel. Yeah, exactly. So I said to the teacher, that's not what I want to do. And she was like, what do you want to do for her? <laughs> and I said, I want to paint. And so she was like, okay, you can paint. What would you like to paint on? That big board over there. And it's like this big piece of wood. And I painted a lake with happy birds and a happy sun 
and yeah, bright, shining uh, sun in a pretty blue sky and lots of green and grass. Very happy picture. Yeah. Yeah. Because you wanted to. Because I wanted to. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. That just, yeah, Her Highness. Yeah, Queen Freya. Um, but that's also something that I've noticed you... I mean, it's, of course you're not going to relinquish it if it's such a large part of yourself, but moving into like your characters and you know your work right now, um, I feel like that's something that you take with you. Like, you're particular. And, you know, you... Like, obviously as actors, we can't always say no to everything. Exactly. We have to take mm -hmm. some jobs to yeah. survive especially at this stage in our career. Yeah. But um, I just, I see you as an actress that starting out was very particular about she wanted to, what she wanted to do. I also feel like five years ago when I started out, there was a lot better material and a lot There's, more material. Uh, it's garbage now. It's getting really bad. Why, why do you think that is? That's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And I like, I didn't participate in pilot season yeah. because I'm leaving. Oh, and right, yes. so like, I got a few scripts um, in January, mm -hmm. and I was just like, ugh, yeah. ugh. What, what do you think is, um, what, what I do you think, think the reason is? People, I think culture is getting worse, and a culture is basically established by artists mm -hmm. in a society. Um, like, look at culture in the, I don't know, 40s to 70s, and then look at it now. Mm -hmm. Movies were better, music mm -hmm. was better, um, fashion was at times better. Um, and so I think people, I think also with technology, with that yeah. evolving and people putting so much focus and yeah. attention on, on technology, which yeah. can be bad because like it takes them. IPhone for a movie we went out for. Don't. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, no, sorry. Just keep on going. Keep on going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need to get into okay. that. <laughs> so anyway, um, so people are always scrolling through Instagram or like yeah. Facebook and they're absorbed with these things that are so shallow and people... Uh, are doing that instead of reading mm -hmm. or watching a movie or listening to music. Or talking to each other. Or talking to each other. It's crazy. Because you go out to dinner and people put their phone on the table and I understand if you have business. Yeah. But otherwise, like, it's really just manners to just yeah. focus your attention and but listen I'm gonna look to at my another phone. person. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I think it's a really bad thing and it's like, People always talk about living in the present moment and being mm. in the present, but if we're always consumed by what's in, what's on our phone, we're not really observing life around us and yeah. being here in the physical universe. We're off on some like cyber universe. Yeah, and you think that's having an effect on the material? Yeah, definitely. I think that will because I'm getting a lot of stuff for um, younger audiences where it's done where people can watch it on an iPhone. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, where um, content is going. Yeah. I took a class back in university where, well, this was like six years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was all about, it was called entertainment technology. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I mean, the future is mobile. Yeah. If you can create content from mobile devices, you're in the right lane. And I think as a result, content gets more shallow mm -hmm. because, you know, movies are and I wrote an article recently, it's like movies are like paintings, except you have the addition of movement and editing, mm -hmm. and every shot should be framed up just how you would have painting. Where is the person going to be? How much negative space am I going to have? What colours are they going to be? The lighting, etc., to create a movement and effect. And when you watch something like that in the cinema or on a TV screen, you're getting the full effect. Mm -hmm. Whereas now with things on the iPhone, you're not going to have that full effect uh, hmm. And therefore, content gets more shallow, and uh, yeah, just the whole art form is reduced. Yeah, it's being diminished, cheapened. Art, yeah, exactly. Because art essentially is like communication mm -hmm. with technical skill, the execution yeah. of technical skill. Um, and so, yeah, we just lo lose technical, the technical aspect when things are yeah. on the iPhone. Yeah, it's true. And I'm shooting this on an iPhone. <laughs> That's different. It's not art. It's an interview. Or it could be art. Sorry. That was a very all artful the, response. All opinion, you gave. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's good and bad? Um. Um. Uh. Okay. I got a little sidetracked. I want to talk more about that, mm -hmm. but.
time is not on our <laughs> yeah, side yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, with that being said, um, I do want to move into like your relationship and love for character work, mm. which you know is something that we both relate upon mm -hmm. and relate on, mm -hmm. and like now going to the same center to study through yes. your recommendation. <laughs> um, it's really opened my eyes up to, and I watched your interview about the acting center, yeah, right. which you did like five yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were just like, yeah, you know, most of the classes that I've been in, it's really just teaching you to be like yourself. Yeah. You know, your, your true self, your open self, but mm -hmm. some kind of like aspect of who you are. Mm -hmm. And I, I did that like most of us had, and there was something missing. Yeah. And so this is what it was. And I see in the character work that you do and the characters that you play how much you love them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I see, and even with your yeah. smile, I see how much <laughs> that you love and you care for right. these these real people. And um, I just, I, I wanted to ask you about these three characters. Mm -hmm. The character from Beneath the Waves, yes. who was uh, deaf. Yes. And then your character from The Choking Game. Mm -hmm. And then your character from No Way to Live. Mm -hmm. And the reason why um, Beneath the Waves is a short that you did. Um, the Choking Game is a feature that was on Lifetime, and A No Way to Live is a feature that we were in that comes out um, tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, no, I well, I don't know whenever this is going to be released, so oh. it's probably going to be uh, okay. yesterday. This is going to come out the 18th. The 18th of July. Yeah, <laughs> boom. Um, but each of those characters, I felt, represented that um, that 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 desire, like I said mm -hmm. about you earlier, for freedom. Interesting, because I don't think about that. I don't think. Um, I'm not very analytical of my characters in that way. Like, I don't think, what are they striving for? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But it's interesting that it's you It's just how, it it, I yeah. just picked it up, because it was just like a through line. Yeah, right. You know, exactly. for me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I do want to know about, like, your relationship to the process when it comes to creating yeah, that. Yeah, right. So... For me, I, I, so I, I, I can talk about acting for hours, I love it. <laughs> um, I love like my favourite actors like Philip Seymour Hoffman, Meryl Streep, Dustin mm -hmm. Hoffman because they really play characters with such strong reality. Mm -hmm. They can play such varying characters but you totally buy that character and that character. Mm -hmm. They're as real as each other. Some actors put on, they play characters and it doesn't quite feel real, it feels mm -hmm. a little bit heightened, like they are putting on a character and they're, and they're not fully being that person. Yeah. So that's what I strive for in acting. And I I know a lot of classes, they approach it, I'm like, oh, what can you find in yourself mm -hmm. to be like the character? And it's like, I don't need to have my own personal experience to understand the character because everybody in the world has very different experiences. And in order to understand you, I don't have to have all your experiences. Right. I can understand you without that. So it's just like a character. You understand who that character is and where they're coming from. And um, Yeah, it's basically just fully understanding who that person is, where they are emotionally. Sometimes, as uh, for Nora, it was figuring out what her struggle is and what she is fighting for because she does have that in the script. Mm -hmm. And then just fully just being... What was being she fighting person. for? Well, I think what everyone is is really striving for is survival, mm -hmm. um, or their concept of what is survival. So for her, it's you know when you see the movie, you'll see that she, um, how I understood her was that she's really, she thinks is what she's doing is survival for herself. Mm -hmm. That's how she justifies it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then with the character in um, the choking game. Like, it was very different because she's a teenager. Mm -hmm. Or Nora's a teenager as well. But yeah. it's like, she's a modern teenager. Mm -hmm. So she's dealing with all the angst of being a teenager and all the pressures yeah. of uh, uh, teenage life. Mm -hmm. And still, there was... Like, I don't want to give anything away about the movie. You can. <laughs> okay. Um, but, like, her desire to engage in the choking. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm as an individual who at the end comes out as very strong and resolute mm -hmm. you know was very interesting to me because it was just like again <clears throat> she was fighting for that whatever that survival thing was for mm -hmm. her and she had to go through that tunnel yeah you know she had to like kind of be introduced into because if she had just stayed with her friend mm -hmm. she never would have grown yeah. she would never mm -hmm. have evolved but because yeah. she went through that process um, 
which could be seen like from an outside spectator's point of view as um, troubling. Mm -hmm. You know, she would not have been able to like sit in herself and be like, okay, this is what I want to do. I don't want to do that. Stay away from me. I'm going to get this, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and then with the, the character in Beneath the Waves, I was only able to see the scene that's on YouTube mm -hmm. with her, yeah. uh, her father. But even then, um, I could just see her real fight for love, mm -hmm. you know? And how frustrating it had been for mm -hmm. her in her life to, um, I guess, kind of uh, navigate the world without it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's where conflict comes from as well as being the, having the character thrown off balance a little bit mm -hmm. and then them having to sort of figure out oh what's the right balance and mm -hmm. who are they yeah really but you do such a good job at it oh thanks yeah no no I really really admire it um, who's like who was I mean I know you just said that Meryl Phillips mm -hmm. Seymour Hoffman Dustin Hoffman mm -hmm. what's like I mean because you've gotten to play some pretty cool roles in a yeah. wide variety yeah already yeah, yeah. Um, so like, what's a dream role? I get asked that so much and the thing is I can't answer it because, I mean, do you mean like a, ca a particular character or, or, well, because sometimes I think people ask me that and they think, they're thinking in terms of like, what kind of character would you like to pr play? And I think, well, I want to play every character, right, like right, a right. multitude of different characters, not one. The dream role is just obviously working with a director who has a very specific style, mm -hmm. knows what know he knows his vision, working with amazing actors, mm -hmm. and having a great script mm -hmm. and an awesome character. And that for me was no way to live. When I first read that script three years ago, it was a dream role. It was the I know. role I'd been yeah. running for three. <laughs> That's why I wanted to ask you years. the question. Yeah. Because you played it. Mm -hmm. So now what is the next one? Now the next one is finding more great directors who have more great scripts and okay. more great characters. And so it's the collaborative process. Yeah, it has to be every aspect yeah. to be a dream role. That's a great answer. Yeah, <laughs> only you would give that answer. I love that. Um, but for like for for myself, mm. who wants to like hear the other answer? Yeah. If there is a particular type of character that you have not gotten to play yet, I honestly haven't thought about it. Is there nothing that you're like chomping at the bit to do? Like a certain type of personality, something you've tried in class that you would love to explore deeper? Uh, no. Really? Yeah, I haven't thought about it, honestly. Um, I mean, when Nora came up, I hadn't really been thinking for five years, okay. I want to play like the character. southern yeah. girl, but it came up and it, the character like leapt up yeah. from the page at me and I was like, wow, that's a cool character. And I think also because I'm not a writer, it's like not my point of view to think about the character so much as just reading a lot of scripts and then seeing the great the great ones stick out at me. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. It kind of makes sense. Um, Is there a character that you want to play that you have? Well, I played it. Yeah. Yeah, so I played it in the first movie that I did. Oh, okay, cool. All Cheerleaders Die. And because that guy's kind of like an American psycho character. Yeah. And I want to do it again because I was so nervous and I was so green and I was just like, I can't watch that movie. Yeah. But uh, I can't watch my performance. The movie's fine. Oh, but, uh, no, you're great in that movie. I saw it. All right, you're well, really good. Thank you. Yeah. I, I accept that. I'm not just going <laughs> to uh, dismiss that compliment. So thank no, you. No, you did stand out. Yeah. Thank definitely. you. Um, well, I was very excited to get the role. But like, it's a question that I ask myself mm. where it's like, okay. I did that. That was the first role I got. Yeah. Now, like, what do I want to do? Like, what is it that would make me super, super excited? And I think the answer for me is kind of an offset of that character, where it's it's a character that presents one thing to the world, and it's completely different mm -hmm. underneath. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that relates to me, mm -hmm. you know? And um, within there, there's a lot of different, you know, characters. But, like, that's, like, the general... Uh, like they're like putting on a front for everyone else, but, but really deep down, deep down, it's else. something, yeah, that you have no like idea. Nora, exactly, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, like that whole um, that relationship, yeah, you know, I love those for whatever mm -hmm. reason. So yeah, yeah cool. is there something like in that frame uh, of mind? It's really tough. I can't think of anything because I just I don't think I've never thought about it really. I just think like hope that there's more great roles out there, there that are. are as good as Nora, and there are. They'll eventually there are, come. yeah, but um. And if not, you can just create it. Yeah, exactly. You know? But, um, 
Yeah. I mean, I wrote a script, actually. I know. With David, yeah. Is this the chicken one? No, chicken. It's called Chicken Woman. Chicken Woman. It's about, if you'd like to know, it's about um, a girl, um, Susan Kemper, who works at a chicken factory called Happy Farms, but it's not very happy. It's not a happy it's farm. It's uh, unethical. Um, and it's run by soy lecithin, like soy lecithin, which is like an ingredient you'll find in things, but it's soy lecithin. Don't ask why. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get it. It went right over my head. Oh, okay. I was just like, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, soy lecithin, yeah. Yeah, yeah soy yeah. lecithin. Oh, that, yeah, that guy. It's like completely random. And she she eats one of the experimental eggs one day oh, that's been God. injected with like uh -huh. antibiotics or hormones or whatever. And then she becomes Chicken Woman and she has the power to talk to chickens. So. Are you done? Done. With the script? Oh, done with the script, yeah. yeah. And the synopsis. <laughs> Is it a feature? <laughs> it's a feature. How many pages? Oh, I, sh I can't remember. Um, Like 90 something? I don't know. You wrote a full script. Yeah. Good for you. Thanks. That's a, like that's an accomplishment. Yeah, I know. I was super scared. Yeah. Because I'm like not a writer. But I think also, um, I did really love writing when I was really, really young, like maybe five to seven. And then I went to school. And mm. then in school, they're like, you're not very good. And they give you grades. Mm -hmm. And then they, uh, they evaluate for you. And then you go like, oh, well, I guess I'm bad in English. Because mm. you told me I am. Yeah. And now I'm getting that back, actually. That love. Yeah, that I'm confidence. getting it back. The confidence and because David's such an amazing writer as yeah. well it like helped because I would see him write and then I'd be like oh well, yeah and pick up on the things he did and then I would write and sort of duplicate that mm -hmm. David for those who don't know is the right one of the writer directors of No Way to Live mm -hmm. and is also Miss Tingley's loving boyfriend <laughs> um, yeah. you just said something that, that was uh, it makes a lot of sense to me uh, when we're like the the school that we now train at together is called the Acting Center and they, they, they encourage you to trust your own impulses, trust your own ideas when it comes to creating a character. You don't need a teacher's uh, validation or acceptance or approval. Yeah. And it's just creating deep, deep trust within mm -hmm. oneself as an artist and uh, in your creative choices. Did you always have issue with being told, you know, like what's good? or not from the external world or did, did that affect you like severely negatively at a certain point where you like tell me about that because yeah. it seems to be something that you really appreciate you know like yes. the ability to just do it your way oh it's okay oh let me snooze that or stop that well i think that as an artist you mm -hmm. have intuition mm -hmm. and you know what's right and I would go to a lot of acting classes and they, you know, they give you a scene and you hop up there and you do it and then they critique you. Oh, we need her. Oh, she's not really the character. You need to be more angry or sad or whatever. Now, ultimately, that's that teacher's opinion. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really learning a particular skill that I can apply to anything. Mm -hmm. I'm really, only what I'm getting from that is an an education of how that teacher thinks mm -hmm. and then learning or being um, indoctrinated into thinking that way mm -hmm. for everything I do and that's not really art because for example Picasso didn't sit there with a teacher over his shoulder saying now you need to move the brush mm -hmm. like this and it needs to be more like that he had the skill there and then his own application of what he thinks as an artist with that skill right um, so it's really fully his art now if everybody's telling you how to do something and what to do, it's not really your art anymore. It's their art and mm -hmm. your art, and it's just a bit wishy-washy, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, I got more out of it from watching other people mm -hmm. work. Um, and yeah, there, there was times when I just listened, but I would also see teachers just tear apart yeah. as artists because they say, well, you know, they invalidate them a lot, which is mm -hmm. not good as an artist. And they introvert them into themselves and say, oh, well, you know, that part wasn't very real or that part needs more of that. And then you think, oh, my God, I just want to do, do a good job. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say, you know, I didn't really buy that. Or let's relate this moment to a particular incident in your life mm -hmm. to make it more real. And I just think, where, where's imagination in all this? If you're just using all the events from your own life and all the emotions from past events in your own life, Imagination is a big part of art. Mm -hmm. So where's the imagination aspect yeah. of that art that you're creating? Yeah, I love her eyes get so bright. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 
yeah, so that's my thought. And I went to lots of different workshops yeah. and classes and you get up there and they tell you what to do. And it was also very discerning as well because <coughs> like I always was like, oh, if a teacher told me something, I would analyse that for myself and see, you know, does that ring true? Can that mm-hmm. be applied? Because I really think knowledge is only as valuable is that... Uh, it, um, knowledge is only as valuable it, as it can be applied and it works and it gets an effect mm-hmm. and a good result. Yeah, so, so you I'm, take what works for you yeah. from their notes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, instead of being um, beaten down by it. Like just being exactly. smart about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just understanding that they're not always right. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. They do want to help you. Well, and and usually. I, yeah, and I also think that in areas such as uh, acting where there's so many different points of view and different techniques and you get very authoritarian mm-hmm. teachers mm-hmm. and I think that happens in fields that are less codified where there's less knowledge and less truth because mm. when you have truth on something mm-hmm. such as like a science it sort of you don't need to have enough yeah. authority yeah because here's there's the facts the, that's the authority yeah, yeah the information is the authority here's the facts you know I don't need to be the teacher and tell you how to do something which is what you've now created which is what you're creating every day as your artist yeah that authority is you yeah you are the, th- yeah. the authority you yeah you have to re- rely on intuition and um i think acting is one of those things that's a bit muddled as well because people you know rely on that teacher to tell them how to do something or and the then, director or the director yeah. and that translates to when you're working on set and you rely on the director whereas what you know you need to be responsible as an artist right. responsible for your own creativity and your own art and make decisions for yourself and obviously there's a little bit of collaboration that goes on with yeah. the director um for certain things but uh, other times you just make the decision and if the director likes it you know they like it and if they, they don't, don't they'll let you know yeah yeah well you hope so <laughs> yeah you, you sometimes hope so. they don't yeah <laughs> on both sides yeah yeah all right, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, yeah. one more question. Yes. Um, because unfortunately, I have to go. Yes, dinner. But, Wait. oh, man, this is just getting, like, juicy. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can do a part two. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so there's a question I ask everyone. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Which one? Yeah, the fear one. I was going to ask you that I one. I know. That's not oh, what I was going to oh, ask, good. though. Oh, good, okay. Oh, so she's ready, so I'm, I'm not going to ask you that one. I'm ready, I was practicing it in the shower the other day. Okay, well, then that, we can do don't, that one. No, we don't have to. No, no, let's do that one first. No, let's do the other one first. Okay. Yeah. You need more time? Yeah, okay. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> all right, so uh, we'll, we'll end with this. Yes. We'll end with this. Okay. What is your, like, how do you define Rise and Thrive? Rise and Thrive is uh, succeeding and doing your best and thinking positive and and also that intention. Yeah. Intention that gets you up. Yeah. And thriving. So it's it's like, it's a lot of elevation. Yeah. Yeah. You have to think positive and you have to have a plan in place and goals and actions and, yeah, then you shall rise and thrive. Dope. Dope. Thank you, Fran. You're welcome, Tom. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) I really thought you were going to ask the fear question.